Yo, what is going on, my fellow Weebs? Colonel here, and welcome back to the channel. So today, we're going to be going over the new Zover weapons that are released with the new Cross Shipless Seal. But before jumping out, if you guys are new here, as always, my name is Colonel from Outcover PS2 content. We much appreciate the subscribers work our way towards that 10k mark, hopefully, by the end of this year. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump into this. So, what do you guys think of the new intro? Still kind of feeling it out. Not sure if I want to tweak it or maybe mess around with some... I'm talking like I made the intro. Skulls actually made it for me, so much appreciation to her. Um, still kind of working through some stuff on the channel, actually uh, changing up a few things. So things might be a little mismatched for a while, but hang in there. We're still uh, going through some growing pains. And I appreciate you guys sticking through it with me here. Today's video should be pretty simple, pretty straightforward, actually. Going over the new Jober weapons with the cross ship uh, Lucille that just recently came out. This is kind of our new uh, Vershmel's replacements. And honestly, guys, they're actually really good. Um, we're going to talk about where I recommend using these weapons, how much of a you know of a bump they are over the weapons we currently have, and like if they're worth making uh, with the advent of 11 star weapons literally next week. Um, so let's pop over to, well, actually, I'd love to pop over to uh, the wiki, but unfortunately, Visiphone is not updated yet. It's been over 24 hours. It's a bummer. They've yet to update the new weapons on there. And uh, unfortunately, the PSO2 and GS wiki that's being worked on is currently not up. So we're going to have to kind of work with some in-game stuff here. And you're going to have to uh, go with the source of uh, trust me, bro, because I can't actually show you guys the, uh, the potential because I'm not spending money to unlock the potential right now on this weapon that I literally bought for uh, the thumbnail. Um, I spent 25, I think 50 of the growth into just literally to, to make the thumbnail itself. But from what I understand, the potency goes up to 41% at max level. Uh, we have natural PP recovery speed plus 15%. When HP is at 90% or greater, um, up to 50% HP recovery after photon blast activation starts 10 seconds after equipping. So basically a pretty solid uh, weapon itself. Nothing too amazing, nothing too terrible. From what I understand, it's actually three different potentials. So I may have a screenshot on screen if I can find um, some people that actually have these weapons to grab a screenshot of their potentials to uh, show off all of them. Uh, but this is just the Soaring Blade one. From the most important portion of this realistically is the potency and the potency amount is 41% at level six. Uh, so it is a pretty solid weapon. It's a 10 star. It's got quite a bit of power overall at max level. And then of course that 41% is pretty nice. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually take a look over on the damage calculator after we set up more or less everything and see how uh, the weapon fares when we compare it to our current 10 stars we have access to and maybe some uh, some qualifying nine stars that might be useful. All right, so here we are over on the damage calculator. Uh, shout out to Cakewalk for getting this updated super quick. Uh, it was updated basically almost the same day. So super awesome job there. Thank you so much. Um, there'll be a link to damage calculator in the video description. I've gone over how to use this multiple times. We're going to go over some very small, basic things. Um, just you know, what we're comparing at the moment. You can see the weapons that we have ticked here. So you'll that's what you're going to see when we actually take a look at the damage formula chart. Um, and as you can see, is over, the only thing that you care about over is the 41%. Like, it, honestly, everything else doesn't matter. It's, like, it's extra effects, which isn't bad. Um, but that's all we're really concerning is the 41. That's all we're really concerned about, excuse me, is the 41% overall. So I'm going to pop over to the weapon analysis and I'm going to go over what we actually are using for the calculations. Now, you can change this up. Um, it's up to you individually, but a rare with Fatal 1 is pretty attainable if you were kind of keeping up with the current weapons that were available. Um, I would say a rare with Fatal 2 is actually more attainable, um, seeing as how many rares they've basically thrown at us uh, for free. Um, mixed with the extra bonuses that have been going on. It's really not too difficult to get an extra level on a Fixa. Um, it is just RNG at the end of the day, but I decided to go with Fatal 1 just because now you have the ability to overwrite um, Fixas, so it should be even easier to uh, ensure that you get the fix that you're after. Of course, you're playing Slayer. You want uh, Termina, not Fatal. Um, and if you're going with a bad neck setup, you know, that, that's all you. I'm pretty sure you're not even watching this video or need to hear anything from me. You already have an idea of uh, how to say, get this all set up. But we're going Fatal because that's pretty much common for right now uh, for everyone, as seeing as we do not have enough crit chance to uh, not want to get some more crit chance at the moment. Um, as far as our augment setup, we're just going with LC augments, something that's really attainable. Uh, the XD is a little bit rough at the moment just because um, we haven't had an AC scratch in a while, AC support scratch in a while. I assume we're going to get one very, very soon, seeing as two new weapons have been uh, basically are being released 
So they tend to release the AC support scratches either a week or maybe two weeks after a new weapon releases or right around the time a new weapon releases. So expect to see that on the horizon very soon. Um, but you can replace this with the uh, with the trials, um, Wardra or uh, Guard. It's, it's up to you realistically. I think Wardra I think is the better one to replace it with um, and just deal with the status effects and just not getting status affected um, versus the Guardra, which would be uh, damage reduction uh or basically make you take more damage overall like i think that honestly would be your better choice um and of course if you're stacking them all it tends to get more and more you also can do this thing where you alternate them um where you have like one on one armor and one on the other one and then one over here uh that's also an option some people tend to go for so that that is also you know very useful the biggest thing is getting through 3.5 percent potency here um and the biggest thing you're losing here is like the potency floor which if you're a slayer, you already don't care about because you're mostly you know, leaning into that high amount of crit chance you have access to. Um, but if you're not a slayer, then of course you want to have a decent amount of potency floor because you aren't getting um, you know, the extra amount of crit chance that slayer is getting. Uh, Grand Dread Keeper LC is a bit more of a divisive one, but in all situations that we've ever tested damage um, consistently across the board every single time, this has worked out to be better. Um, the only other thing that you really would kind of mix in here that I'm like now thinking about, I kind of did technically forget, and I'm like just really looking at it more intensely, is the um, high Eldamina LC. Um, I think we just recently got high Kavar Domina LC. I'm actually going to check on that. Give me one sec. So, yeah, high Kavar Domina LC is now dropping, but keep in mind it's 2.75% potency and 2.5% potency floor. Um, potency floor is very nice, but you are giving up quite a bit of potency overall. So again, if you're playing Slayer, definitely want to lean more towards the potency over the potency floor. You really don't need to get that that much potency floor. You're mostly leaning into the crits, um, seeing as you have a much higher amount of crit overall. And they did buff, you know, of course, our uh, our fixes. So definitely, definitely, definitely want to lean more into that potency. Um, the amount of potency floor isn't as important, but if you're every other class in the game, or if you're not speed running and not looking for that god tier run. So I've always had people in the comments talk about this. They're like, oh, well, you know, I don't run potency floor and I find that more often than not, you know, I end up doing more damage and so on and so forth. You're lucky that, that that's the reality of the situation is it is a chance. You have the chance to crit. You're leaning into that chance itself. If we're looking with law of large numbers, uh, eventually that chance tends to even itself out. So take with a grain of salt. This is napkin math. This is your know, spreadsheet math um, in, you know, in world uh, or, uh, you know, real life demonstration demonstrations are I'm trying to say like in game um, data is going to is going to vary from person to person when you really look at it. So just again, take it with a grain of salt. OK, pop back over here. So this is what we're going to go with. Again, you can swap some things out, maybe swap out this XD for the high ale. But at the end of the day, we're comparing the weapons to each other and there's really not much of a concern. It's just direct power we're comparing uh, between the two. So it's actually kind of nice. Um, so. We're looking at we're going with Ray R1 right now, but realistically, I mean, anyway, honestly, Ray R3 is, is, is what, what I would have I would honestly go with, um, at least for me, 81 percent damage is pretty or 80 percent of our damage as being PAs is pretty standard. Um, if you want to go with a safer bet, you can go with the uh, Ray R3. Basically, the difference between these three is if 50% of your damage is PAs, 65% of your damage is PAs, or 80% of your damage is PAs. I feel like in most situations, a lot of classes, their damage is mostly PAs. It's not other stuff. Um, but to each is their own. I say, you know, test, see how you feel about it, see how we're, uh, we're going with the situation, and we kind of go forward from there. Also, let me know how you guys feel about this dark mode thing that I'm using for uh, <laughs> for this. I've been uh, flashbanging you guys for a while, and I feel bad about that. but. This might be a little bit harder to read. Um, if it is, just let me know in, you know in future videos, we won't use it. But by the way, this is what we're using. This is our comparison. Fatal one, Ray R. Uh, these are augments. We're keeping it the same across the board for everything. And of course, you can make adjustments if you absolutely feel like you need to. Um, taking a look over here. So if we look at the DPS comparison, uh, what we're really kind of concerned with is these five slots right here. Everything else, I don't even know why I would even have Argenti. I mean, I honestly, just take this off, like stop comparing. I guess if you are still using your Argenti, you want to see how much more power you can get by swapping up to something better, um, then cool. Yeah, that's that's worth. But other than that, I wouldn't even bother uh, being concerned about it. We can always turn off seasonal events. It doesn't really make much sense. Um, long range advantage, of course, for range classes, blah, 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 blah. OK, yeah, all this all this is set properly the way it needs to be. I just wanted to make sure that I didn't miss anything. We are set bouncer slayer, but if you are doing a slayer comparison, please make sure you have yourself set to slayer. Go ahead and you know calculate in how much you are going to be able to do certain things, so on and so forth, uh, so you can get proper setups. The biggest thing is your crit chance. 
the crit chance does factor in how good a specific weapon is because some potentials do have extra crit chance, extra crit damage, so on and so forth. Between these weapons, it's mostly going to be the fixes that are going to be different, so just keep that in mind. Um, and the last bit of nuanced information is this Abandak customization. is it's, it's these augments up here, which is basically like the unique best setup you possibly can for Abandak. That's why this Abandak is like so much stronger than everything else because it's one, not LC augments, and two, it's best case scenario. Um, so I wouldn't look at this at all, actually. Um, I don't even recommend augmenting for a band deck. It's too much of a headache unless you already are there. And in both situations, uh, Fatal can end up actually pulling ahead depending upon uh, how lucky you get. So either way, taking a look at the comparisons, you can kind of see where we are at the moment. Um, Flugel is kind of falling behind the most. Now, we're not looking at baseline. We're looking at uh, Fatal 1, basically. So you can see Flugel Guard is falling behind the most because you got to keep in mind this is not counting the buff Flugel Guard is giving you. Um, but this is just at this point, Flugel Flugs are basically a PB stick unless you have a high um, a high fixa version of your Flugel Guard. Some people do, uh, and it makes it very much worth using at that point in time. I know uh, someone in my alliance uh, had a what I think is a Fatal Five Flug, which is amazing um, and has been amazing for a very long time. Uh, but now at this point, you know, it's kind of fallen behind, fallen off. Uh, so we have newer weapons that are available to us. But in, if you're in that situation, of course, it's understandable. Use your weapon, so on and so forth, right? Um, we can take a look at the baseline here. We've got our baseline we're going with. Fatal 1. And then if we take a look at this over, FX Fatal 1, it is actually a little bit behind. But only because we're at 80% of our PAs or damage. If we're looking at for like the mid mid range for most people, let's say we went with Ray R2. Let's go Ray R2 here. It is actually a little bit ahead. It's a tiny bit ahead of what we're comparing it to. Now, the reason for that is because of the extra potency on its potential. It is 41%. That does make a sizable amount of difference when you're looking at comparison between the two weapons. Now, we are still within 1%, which, yeah, if we're looking at it just Fatal 1 uh, Zover versus Fatal 1 um, Rayar, then, like, why would you bother? It doesn't really make much sense, right? However, when you start to consider this comes from something that's extremely farmable, you're not going to stop at Fatal 1. You're going to build up to Fatal 3 in most situations, if not push further past that. And with the way that they have adjusted drop rates recently and how quickly people are getting drops, I mean, I have a Termina 4 um, Zover set of jet boots. Like, mine are Termina 4, right? Like, they're already insanely good. Um, like it's just some, a situation where you're going to be building up your fixes a lot more. So it is worth considering that if this is your stopping point, let's say, for example, you're someone who, while you enjoy playing the game, maybe you don't have the biggest amount of confidence in your ability to complete difficult content. Um, maybe you aren't concerned with that really difficult boss fight that's coming up. We have a new boss fights coming out uh, next week. And you're someone who doesn't really want to spend the money on like the new weapon that's coming out, right? You have to keep in mind that this 11 star, this is the first 11, like the first high dollar weapon we're getting since they made the changes to drop rates recently. They essentially made the changes to drop rates. So our 10 stars became more attainable. Then we got Rayar, which those were dropping like candy insanely fast. And then it has been just Rayar and Flugel Guards for the longest time. Now we've got Jover that's releasing, but this, this piece of content is tailored to it, meaning you can go ahead and get exactly what you need. And we expect drops to be fairly, you know, fairly regular. This is our first time we're having a weapon that's going to drop that we have to see what its drop rate's really going to be like. Is it going to be closer to what Flugel Guard was when it first released? I know a lot of people are thinking that it's going to be, but keep in mind that they quite literally rebalanced everything and said that that was not what they intend to do moving forward. If they stick to what their intentions are, which the dev team has, most of the time, they do swing and miss, don't get me wrong, but they have most of the time. They stick to where their intentions are. This might be a more attainable weapon. However, if it falls into the situation of it's, you know, it's more expensive, like let's say, for example, these weapons are going to run you up of like 10 mil or a baseline weapon. Well, you may want to consider something like Zover with a high fixa rate because they come base with fixa fatal if you buy them for 300 of the growth mint twos, meaning you're getting the best case scenario. And you can build up that fixa over time. Maybe you push yourself and you get lucky, you get up to a fixa five. And then you take a look at the baseline 11 star and find out that the 11 star is actually weaker than your, you know, your fixa fatal five, which does happen a lot, actually, um, when we're looking at weapons. Just because it's a high star rarity does not always mean it's a better weapon. It's very important to consider fixes when we're looking at that situation. So if you're someone who 
Maybe you're not going to go into the new one when it comes out. Maybe you're like, I don't think it's going to happen. Maybe, you know, wait a week, you know, give it till next week. See how the drop rates are looking. But if you're in a situation where you're like, hey, look, I'm probably going to stop at 10 star and you don't already have a Rayar built. Azover is actually a really good weapon to upgrade to. Even if maybe you do have a Rayar built and maybe you didn't get you didn't have a chance to jump into all the events. You don't have access to getting all of the re the, uh, the materials for Rayar all the time. Um, being locked at like, you know, Fatal 1 or Terminal 1 or, or whatever your fix that is that you're working with, you're stuck at the first one, it's only going to take you so far. Zover is going to move past it and it's going to move past it in a meaningful way. Two, three, four or five percent doesn't seem like a whole lot, but a lot of what PSO2 does is multiplicative damage bonuses. And when you start stacking these on top of each other, you start to see massive differences in numbers. So if you're looking at like, hey, look, the 11 star is not my end game. It's not going to be my end game. Um, I'm someone who builds up over time. Zilver is actually a reasonable upgrade for you, something you definitely can go towards. Unfortunately, there is always that price tag of upgrading something costs just shy of 500 or 5 mil um, when it comes down to weapon potential unlocking, as well as upgrading the actual uh, the actual level of the weapon all the way to plus 80. Um, but it is, again, worth mentioning that people use these version notes for a long time. People use their fluvo guards for a very long time. I know it seems like we got weapons very quickly, which is something I saw pop up in my most recent video. Where we talked about the cost of upgrading a weapon. People are like, oh, we're getting new weapons in like a month or two months. That is completely incorrect. We've had flugel guards for upwards of four months. I want to say it's like about four months, maybe five. I haven't checked the exact date, but we had flugel guards for a very long time. They just weren't very attainable for a while. Then they became very attainable. Then a new weapon came out like a month afterwards. That weapon was very, very attainable. So it felt like we moved through things very quickly. But realistically speaking, we've had those weapons for quite some time. Now we're moving into a situation where this is the first time we're getting a hold of a weapon. We'll have to see how attainable that weapon becomes. And realistically speaking, Zover might actually be the play for you. It may not be, you know, dead on arrival. It actually could be a very good weapon if you're you know, gunning for that high fixa. Or maybe you want to wait for the 11 star weapon to drop and just go with the baseline. That's something some people do enjoy, even if it's a weaker choice, because they like looking at the higher star rarity. My whole point here is to give you the information that way you can make an informed decision on how you want to go ahead and go about your upgrades. Me personally, I'm going to wait for the 11 star to come out, see how it shakes up with the meta itself, see how it um, compares to the weapons that we have. And if it becomes to a situation where it is too unattainable, I'm just going to farm out as over weapon, push it high fixa and do as much damage as I possibly can. So there was this point in the recording that I realized that I didn't actually actively tell you guys the exact number difference between the uh, the Zova versus the Rayar versus the Pixa uh, versus the Flugel Guard, excuse me, um, and what the actual comparison was. And there are some people that do watch these videos in the background as they're grinding or doing whatever it happens to be. Um, so I figured I'd go ahead and talk with you guys really quick. That way you're aware. So we're talking about the the damage difference between the Zova, the Rayar and the Flugel Guard. Again, there's some things to keep in mind here. Um, with Rayar, it's how much of your damage is actually in PAs. Um, with Flugel Guard, it's how often are you actually getting that PB off, and are you in like a you know in a situation where you're in a group versus solo? Solo not as bad, not as good, but in a group much better. Um, for Flugel Guard, if we're not talking about its damage bonus included along with it, it's about a three percent difference, about three and a half percent difference between Flugel Guard and Zover. Um, for Rayar, it's about a one percent difference, give or take a little bit. Uh, depending upon how much you actually use your PAs in your rotations um, for your damage, and then it's over again. Yeah, it's it's basically that one percent difference. So it is fairly small when you're looking at it from that perspective. But again, keep in mind Zover's main strength is the fact that there are going to be so many of them available, meaning you'll be able to build up your potentials much much higher. And you are also not like unlike you know verse melts, where verse melts was one hundred percent crit chance. Um, you're actually not losing out on down damage. Um, or you're not losing out on being able to get those crits while a target is down, getting access to that massive amount of damage. In case you're curious about that, feel free to hit me up either on Discord or on stream. By the time this video goes live, we should be live um, during that time frame about how that comparison itself works out. Anyway, back to the outro. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching all the way to the end. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Are you be, you know, going for that new weapon? Or are you going to be going for that new boss fight, really pushing your weapons? I know there's some people that always have like their what they consider their flex is i'm still using a tissa i'm still using a verse melts i'm still using I, I cool man make your informed decision based on the information that's in front of you and decide when it's up when you feel comfortable to go ahead and upgrade your weapon however don't push that on anyone else anyway 
Take care, my friends. Peace out.